uh, Pain Like the Old Masters was a book that my high school art teacher had. And it has the step-by-step -step processes of, m of most of the major old masters, what we consider the old masters. Priming the canvas, doing the drawing, moving it to the surface, underpainting, and painting. So, I've taken it and made it my own. That transparent stuff is ink. I don't do a drawing first when I paint big. Um, I will essentially draw with the paint directly on the board. So, what I have here is essentially white, yellow, and orange color, which is a totally fake pigment, but I like to use it. Um, a couple, a purple, a maroon, and uh, I think, and the green, which will come into play later. But using, I mean, it's a pretty limited palette, but using those colors, I can get pretty, pretty good, pretty varied results. The light moves across the surface and catches the texture. You can see that in your film, and that that's not what I'm looking at when I'm working on the piece. So I'm looking at it like straight down all the time, just looking at the way that the colors are being created on the surface. I just I don't see that when I'm working on it, so it's it's nice to see it in here. I'll draw an outline to get the edges of the figures in. Uh, early on, I'm trying to fit in the figure uh, on the board, being mindful of the edges of the piece, and uh, g just get the basic proportions down. I'm looking not only at the space the figure occupies, but the negative space around the figure as well. So I, I lay the wash down to like draw the value of the piece more towards the middle so I can work both towards a, a lighter value and towards a darker value at the same time. So as I build up transparent layers of color that'll become more of a modeled form and less of a obviously painted image. I think the scale that I made the uh, the Gol the Goliath head compared to the original painting, Caravaggio's painting, I think I made it way bigger in mine. And it was, I guess it was semi-intentional. Just to emphasize, exaggerate the uh, perspective of that arm coming out. My fist too, like the, the hand that's holding the head, you can tell is a lot bigger than it probably should be. One of the last times I moved to New York, most of my acrylic paints, which I had been building up a collection of for like 10 years, uh, got lost. So they're probably sitting in a warehouse somewhere in Memphis. I have really started extensively using photo reference this year for almost everything. Even though a lot of times it's just to look at and then draw from. I mean, I'm not trying to copy this thing, it's just, um, it makes it easier. I, I have to think less. I mean, I know what I want to get. I can shoot the photo and that'll give me information to work off of. I mean, I've painted in public before. I've done murals, um, like sort of live art projects. Um, so, especially when I was doing murals, like little kids would come up and talk to me, uh, as well as adults. So I don't, I can engage with people at the same time that I'm working on a painting like this. Um, so, I mean, the addition of the camera is just another 
object in the room, really. Um, you didn't really get in my way or anything. That is nice. Just get the blood running. Back over to the heroic face. The hideous face. I do like that shot, I like the way you move the camera with uh, the tape, or my hand peeling the tape off. 